Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie if you are new here and in today's video I'm gonna be doing another speed review. So I'm gonna be talking about products. Um, honestly all of these are products that I briefly very quickly showed in my vlog that I posted so I will link that up in the end down below. Some of these products you're gonna recognize from my dupes video as well and also some of them you'll just recognize from me using them over the course of you know the past month or so i did talk about a couple of these in my foundation and primer declutter video as well but today is going to be very primer heavy um so i know i had talked about this in my i believe in my dupes video, my vlog, and also my foundation and primer declutter, but I've been on the hunt to find a dupe or suitable replacement for the Becca First Light Priming Filter since that company is going out of business. So I just kind of went a little crazy. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and just chat about some new products that I've tried recently. Some are newer launches, some have been around for a really long time and I'm just now trying them. But if you guys are interested in hearing my full complete thoughts on some products that I've tried recently, then just keep on watching. First things first is the Revlon Rose Glow Face Gloss. So this is, um, it says luminize and hydrate. It also says it's 80% water. You can use this under foundation, on top of foundation, mixed in with foundation. I have been using it entirely as a primer and this was one that did hold a really strong candle to the Becca First Light Priming Filter. It is very pretty. It's very pretty. I will say that first off. It does have a strong rose scent to it. Um, so if you're not somebody that likes fragrance or you just don't like rose scent, then this probably won't be for you. I'm not a huge fan of the rose scent, but it does fade pretty, pretty quickly. So this is what it looks like. It's definitely thicker um, and it has this pinky glow to it. You can see it right there, but it just feels so hydrating and it really does feel like it's made mostly of water. It just feels like you're rubbing like thick water on your face, but it's so shiny and dewy and just looks really, really good on the skin. And I just, it's really, really pretty. It's didn't, it doesn't really get tacky. So it's not a primer that's gonna in like keep your makeup on for a really long time or anything like that. It's just, it just looks pretty and it just looks pretty under foundation. Uh, that's, that's really my best description of it. My best review is it's really pretty. Um, if you're somebody who likes the, like you have drier skin, you would probably really, really like this because it does feel very, very hydrating. I do have quite a few of the primers that I'm talking about today are very hydrating primers, but it's just, I'm a really, really big fan of it. To be honest with you, it didn't make my makeup sit weird. It didn't seem to make my makeup break down faster. It didn't make my makeup stay on any longer, but it just, it just looked nice. And that was a lot of kind of what the Becca First Light Primer was, is it just looked nice. It felt nice going on my face. It felt nice on my skin. It just made my skin look nice. It made my makeup look nice. And that was really what I was looking for was something similar to that, just something really hydrating and dewy and just glossy and that really does hold a candle to it. It's not the one that I spoke about in my review, but that one is a really good candidate as well. It's a very, very nice primer. Next up is the Neutrogena Radiant Cream Concealer. Um, I have the shade, you know, couldn't tell you. Oh, light two. Um, this one is just a little tiny, teeny bit too dark for me. It's not really brightening on my eyes. It's very, it's pretty much my skin color, as you can see right there. I will say first and foremost, I have never used the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, so I know a lot of people that I've seen talk about this on YouTube have been like, it's literally almost the exact same name. There's a letter difference. So is it intended to be a comparison? I don't know how Neutrogena can uh, get away with having that close of a name, but mm, whatever. Um, it is a very nice concealer. It's not super full coverage. It's definitely like a, 
medium coverage at best. I tend to prefer to wear it mixed in with other concealers. I just really like to mix my foundations and concealers and my primers and I just really like to mix everything together so no surprise for me. And also again it's not super brightening so I do like to mix it with something that's just a little bit more brightening but it does look really nice underneath my eyes. It's very lightweight, it's hydrating, it doesn't crease underneath my eyes, it doesn't get cakey or weird, it doesn't like accentuate any fine lines underneath my eyes. It's a really really nice concealer. Um, it's just not super full coverage. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more full coverage, I have want a concealer that's coming up pretty soon in this video that is a lot more full coverage, but that one for like a day-to-day -day lighter coverage makeup, just quick makeup, that one is really, really nice. Next up is the Too Faced Lip Injection Maximum Plump Lip Gloss. If you have seen any of my videos in the past month or so, you've seen this on my lips at the beginning of the videos. I put this on when I put primer on my eyes, so I have it sitting on my lips when I'm doing my eyeshadow and then I'll wipe it off before I put on like my base makeup. Holy shit, it's spicy. Very spicy. This is definitely, out of all of them, the spiciest. Um, again, it is called Maximum Plump, so I'm not surprised there, but I do, I like this version. I've seen other colors. This is the one that I am partial to, the one that's like clear with just like a little bit of like pinky iridescence to it. That's my personal favorite. I just, I like the way that this make my makes my lips look and it does leave behind kind of a lasting hydration on my lips and a little bit of like a lasting plump throughout the day or at least for a couple hours. Um, so if you're somebody that can get like past the super spicy, then I would recommend it. It does make my lips very red. Very, very, very red. Um, and I did one time accidentally like unintentionally overline and like the outside edges of my lips were very red. But I just like the way that it makes my lips look. I will say that I have noticed, I remember one time I put it on, did my makeup, wiped it off like I always do, and then I, a couple hours later, went to go like put it on again and it like didn't do anything. So I feel like it's like a once a day thing with this, which is fine. I don't need to walk around with just giant red lips all the time, but um, I do like using it when I'm filming. I use it every day, even when I'm just regularly getting ready. I just, I like the way that it makes my lips look. I like having these little ones that I can go through pretty quickly and yeah, I enjoy it. I recommend it. Again, very spicy. <laughs> Very, very, very spicy. Next up is the e.l.f. Tone Adjusting Primer. And this is one that I had seen online as being an actual dupe for Becca First Light Priming Filter. I would strongly disagree. I think people were just like, it's purple, so it's a dupe. It's not. Um, it's very thick. You can see it right there. It's very thick, a completely different shade of purple as well. It's just very like, silicone-y and like you can see it gets like a little bit weird when you start to blend it out. It blends in completely. It definitely just has that like silicone finish to it. It's not very shiny or dewy at all. It's very slippy. So comparing this to the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer, which is a primer that doesn't have silicone in it, but it's made to feel like a silicone primer. This is much more slippy and glidey and like almost oily in a weird way. I think that just might be how slippy it is, but it's like has the texture of having like if you're like cooking and you get like just a little bit of like oil on your fingers, it kind of just has that like texture to it. Um, it doesn't really brighten, so I don't see like I'm pretty much convinced that the purple thing is just a fucking myth and the first light primer was just purple because they wanted it to be purple. I didn't really ever notice any brightening with it, especially in my dupes video when I compared it with a primer that wasn't purple. Like it didn't, my face didn't appear significantly brighter on one side. It just, it's a fine primer. I'm sure that I will probably finish it or get a decent amount of use out of it before I get rid of it. But it's like, I won't run out and buy it again. It's just, it's such a weird texture and it makes it me feel like my makeup's not gonna stay on longer. I didn't notice any like 
drastic breakdown of my makeup throughout the day. I, I really didn't. It's just the texture of it makes me feel like that's going to happen. It's not pore filling. It's not, it's just meh. Like I wouldn't recommend it. I'm going to use it because I bought it but it's not something that I'm like, oh my God, you need to go out and get this. It's a total dupe for Becca First Light. Like it's great, oh my God. It's just, even standalone as not a dupe, it's not something I would recommend. It's just really like, don't get me wrong, my hand feels really soft now that it's all soaked in, but it's just, I don't know. If I'm gonna go for one of those kind of more silicone-y type of primers, I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Impossible primer. I like that one a lot more. It's a lot, it just has like, it feels more hydrating. It feels cooling on the skin. It just feels better. Whereas that one just feels like straight purple silicone. And I'm just not a fan. Next up is the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape. So this is obviously a spinoff of regular Shape Tape, but this is significantly more hydrating. It's very, very, very similar to the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I, um, by the way, am the shade 16N Fair Light Neutral is the shade that I have. Um, this is one of the ones I talked about in my dupes video as a dupe for the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. Um, I guess technically the e.l.f. one would be the dupe of this one, but I ended up breaking it down and if you can get the Shape Tape one on sale when they do sales for it. It actually ends up being cheaper than the e.l.f. concealer based on like volume of product. But um, this one has a few more shades to it, just a few. But I, I really, really like this one. I was never a huge fan of the original Shape Tape. I tried it. I liked the coverage for it, but it never looked good underneath my eyes because I do have drier skin. This one, on the other hand, just feels really nice underneath my eyes. It's hydrating. It doesn't like make my under eyes look crepey, even set with powder, but it's also not so hydrating that it's like gets like really funky underneath my eyes and gets all creasy because everything's just moving around. It's a really, really, really nice concealer. I'm a really big fan of it. I will continue to probably repurchase it full price because it is, it's just a really, really nice concealer. Um, I am utterly shocked that it took Tarte this long to come out with like a creamy version of their Shape Tape, especially since Hydrating Camo Concealer has been out for so long. I'm surprised that it took Tarte this long, but I'm a fan. I'm a really big fan. It's definitely out of, I'm kind of looking at everything that I have in front of me, out of everything that I'm talking about today, it is definitely my favorite product. <laughs> Um, I have a couple that I really, really like, but that one is like definitely the standout product of this whole video. Next up is the Too Faced Plump and Prime. So I did get this in a little set. So this is a mini one. It was like a little mini set, but I wanted to try this because this is a slightly more expensive primer. So I wanted to try it in the little one. And honestly, this is quick. 0.6 fluid ounces. So it's almost half and it's like, there's a decent amount of product in there. This will last me a while, but I actually really, really like this primer. I, it looks like this. It's just a really, really nice primer. I, I haven't used it enough to speak to this, like the claims of like, if you use it every single day, like you'll notice a drastic skincare difference. Like it has a bunch of skincare in it. I honestly, I, I have a lot of primers, so I rotate through them a lot. Um, but I really, really like the way that this one makes my skin look. Again, it's one of those kind of more water-based, like very hydrating, very dewy. This one does get a little bit tackier, so it does hold my makeup on a little bit better, but just that is so pretty. And it's just, it's dewy and shiny without any glitter in it whatsoever. It's just clear. It's just a clear gloss that's got a good tack to it. So it really holds your makeup on. It just feels nice. It's really, really hydrating. I'm gonna be saying this about a lot of them because I was on a very specific journey with the primers that I purchased. I very specific, hydrating, dewy, water-based, like I'm gonna be saying that about a lot of these, but I am a really, really big fan of this one. I could see myself purchasing the full size 
when I do run out of this one if they stop selling this little gift set because if they still have the little gift set with the little lip gloss and the little primer I'll totally buy that because it's like a great price for what it was but really big fan it's been on my hand for a little bit now and it's still got a really good shine to it it looked really really good underneath my makeup I it's a really really fucking nice primer <laughs> Next up is the NYX Hydra Touch Primer. So this was a primer that I used to use like several years ago and then I just kind of stopped and then I purchased it again because again, I was on a very specific hunt and this one fell into it. One thing I will say is I've been noticing in this style of packaging for NYX's primers, they've been getting smaller. More expensive and smaller. This isn't even a full fluid ounce. It is uh, 0.84 fluid ounces and I want to say this was like $17. So very expensive. Um, it looks like this. It's a little bit thinner and waterier than the Too Faced one, but has very similar qualities. Again, it's very, very, very watery. It's waterier feeling than the Revlon Rose Glow face gloss that says it's 80% water. This one feels a lot thinner, but this one is very hydrating on the skin. Um, I would say that this is actually probably pretty close to the Smashbox Primerizer is what I would really closely compare it to. It's very hydrating. It's not like, it definitely has like a little bit of a dewy quality to it, but not nearly as dewy as the Plump and Prime. It's just really honestly just feels really hydrating. So if you have really dry skin, this might be one that you really enjoy. It has... It smells like water. Like, you know that like... Like when it's summer and not chlorine. I don't want to say chlorine. But it kind of... Like my grandma used to have... or used to have still has I don't it doesn't matter none of you are gonna go to her house to be able to verify that information but when I was younger my grandma had a swamp cooler in her house and obviously that uses water to push through it and then it makes cold air um, and I used to stand on her bed and like when the swamp cooler was on I used to stand on it and I used to just like breathe in because I love the way that smelled and this smells similarly it smells like like water like if you were to buy a fresh water candle kind of it just fucking smells like water <laughs> like not chlorine it doesn't smell like you're riding pirates of the caribbean it doesn't smell like you're like getting into a pool it just smells like water next up is the makeup revolution prime bright brightening primer with vitamin c and orange blossom the vitamin C and the orange blossom are the reason why I purchased this one in comparison to the Becca First Light Priming Filter. So this one is not purple. It doesn't smell like oranges. Just gonna throw that out there right away. Um, if you happened to see my vlog or my primer and foundation declutter. I did talk about a different Makeup Revolution primer. The name is escaping me at the moment, but part of the reason why I got rid of that one was because it smelled atrocious. This one doesn't smell nearly as bad as the other one. It's just not like, it doesn't smell like oranges at all. It just smells like nothing. <laughs> um, so if you don't like, you know, fragrance, it doesn't smell like anything. Uh, again, super this one is a little bit harder to blend in you're not really going to be able to see it um from here but it does like it has a little bit of a, a almost a white cast to it but not a white cast it's like you know when you are putting on like lotion onto your legs and you go to blend and then it just kind of has like little bits of white streaks through it because it's not blending in all the way. That's kind of what this one does. You have to really work to get it blend in, blended in. Um, but once you do, it's pretty, it's shiny. It's, of all of them, taking the tone adjusting primer out of this. This one is probably my least favorite. It really is just kind of boring. Um, it's a little tacky, I will say that. It doesn't feel nearly as hydrating as the Hydra Touch does or the Plump and Prime or the Rose Glow. It's just kind of almost has like an artificial shine to it. Again, not glittery, glittery 
at all. It's um, just like a glossy, clear shine to it, but it's meh. I haven't worn it, like I've worn it enough times to have like an opinion about it, but I haven't worn it enough times to see if like the vitamin C in it is, would actually make a difference. I don't even think it says anywhere on any of the packaging, like how much vitamin C is in it. Um, I don't wear the same primer every day. So, you know, I doubt that I would ever see any sort of benefits from wearing it. Um, it is nice that it has skincare in it. That's great, but it's just kind of a boring primer to me. But you know, if you are somebody who's looking for a primer who that's really glossy and dewy, but doesn't have any scent to it whatsoever, that one is a nice one. It does have that tackiness to it so it will hold your makeup on for a little bit longer i didn't notice any difference in my skin while wearing it it was just like a gloss glossy primer but not nearly as hydrating last but certainly not least and i'm not going to talk about this one too too much because this one is from my dupes video i did talk about this i in this was my actual dupe for the becca first light priming filter it's not purple um, but this one is the Milani Supercharged Dewy Primer. This one has ginseng and citrus extracts in it. And this one actually does smell like citrusy to it. It, it's, it smells almost identical to the Becca First Light Priming Filter. How many times am I gonna say that in this video? Um, it is white, but it's, again, glossy, dewy, hydrating, no glitter to it whatsoever. Feels good. Gets a little bit of that tackiness to it. Not as tacky as the Prime Bright, but it does definitely get a little bit tacky. It feels really nice. I would also say that these two are pretty close dupes together. I just, on the skin, this looks very, very similar to how Becca First Light looks on my skin, which was why I decided that that was going to be my dupe. Um, no, is it? It's not an exact dupe, but side by side, they looked very, very similar after they were fully applied. So that was that. If you're interested in seeing that, that one applied to my skin, I did apply it in the dupes video, which I will link up in the eye and down below. We're done with primers. Next up is the Milani Peach Tinted Under Eye Brightener. This is from their, they kind of had this collection with, like they focused on a couple different like foods um and peach was one of them i have two things from their peach line but this is the under eye corrector because again i love the becca under eye corrector so i have to replace it this one is a lot peachier than i'm gonna put it right here if you can see my little vein that's right there um i'm gonna put it right there so we can see it cancel out that little vein this one is definitely a lot peachier and more pigmented than the becca one the becca one is definitely not as like wait how, how do i hold my hand here we go but this one has really good coverage i like to kind of just go like this with my fingers and then dot it underneath my eyes and then i'll just take a brush and i'll blend it out lately when i've been doing that i have also been taking like what's left on my fingers and i'll put it on my acne or like my darker spots and it definitely does help cover that up so as you can see it's pretty peach but it's not so peach that it can't be covered with concealer it covers up pretty easily with concealer um it's a little bit hydrating it's not like overwhelmingly hydrating. I have noticed that if my under eyes are a little bit drier, like on a particular day, it will burn just, just a little bit. Like for example, the Maybelline Fit Me concealer, I can't wear that underneath my eyes at all because it burns the living shit out of, uh, out of underneath my eyes. Does not matter when it is, it just constantly burns my under eyes. This is just like every once in a while, if like I haven't been doing a good job with my skincare, it will burn just a little bit, but it goes away really, really quickly once I've blended it out. And it's it's nice. It doesn't wear weird underneath my like concealer or powder. I haven't noticed it like causing anything to crease up or anything like that. It mixes well with my um, NYX primer oil as well. So it it just works really, really well underneath my eyes. It's 
definitely a lot thinner than one that I'm going to talk about in a minute. So it blends out to, it's not super opaque, which isn't something that you want. You want just that little bit of color just to kind of correct. And then it's, is easily covered up with concealer. I do really, really like this one. There is another Milani one that I will be talking about in my next speed reviews video because I bought them at completely different times that I like more than this one, but I do like this one and I will continue to use it. Um, just keep in mind if you were looking for a dupe for the Becca under eye brightening corrector, this one is a lot peachier than that one. So if the Becca one was too bright for you or too light for you. This one might actually work a lot better, but it is definitely a lot peachier. I will say that it is very annoying to me that they only launched this one. So in this line, particularly this peach one, there is only this shade. So if you are darker than me, this won't work for you at all. Um, if honestly, if you're lighter than me, this won't work for you at all. You have to be like my shade or just a little bit darker for this to work. Um, but like deeper skin tones, medium skin tones, this won't work at all. Next up is also from that Milani peach line. This is their baked blush in the shade peach of me. This is what it looks like right here. It's a very, very, very pretty blush. Um, I guess I'm going to swatch this on my arm because my hands covered in like remnants of primer and it's just gonna look funky i will say when you're swatching this you're gonna notice a whole lot of um silver glitter in it it doesn't really come across on the face as glittery when you're using a brush it kind of just falls off but that is what it looks like it's a very 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 pretty blush i do like peachy blushes are my shit, so i love it i will say if you're fairer than me don't get this because i it's almost it's like it's a little to be a little bit too much on my skin sometimes i have to pull back quite a bit when i'm applying this but it's a very 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 pretty blush it's now granted i have had my luminoso for a very long time so i don't know if there is a formula change that happened between when i purchased luminoso like a long fucking time ago versus this one luminoso to me is a sheen uh, just a sheeny blush whereas this one definitely has glitter to it you can tell that it has glitter in it um it works on the skin it's not like aggressive on the face but if you're somebody who likes sheeny blushes and not glitter on your face you will not like this but overall i do really enjoy it um i do like a lot of Milani, it's like a really heavy swatch of it. Um, a lot of the Milani powder blushes I do like. Some of them I have gotten rid of over the years because it's like, there's like no in between with them. It's either like super pigmented with just like a little bit of glitter or a little bit of sheen, or it's like I've had some that have just been, it was a fucking highlight. It was like a pink highlight. It was so shimmery and like not even shimmery, it was just so glowy and like i i couldn't find like a middle ground with it um even as like a blush topper it was like a lot so i am pretty hit or miss i'm i'm very happy with this one but again it's very pigmented it's a pretty dark blush um for my skin tone if you're deeper than me this would look gorgeous on you but for me or anyone fair it it, it can be a little bit much but i like it all right last but not least is the pixie Correction Concentrate in Brightening Peach. Again, I'm pretty sure this is the only shade that they sell of this, which is awful. Brands need to get their shit together, but this is this is what we're gonna talk about. Um, so obviously you can see on first appearance why I would pick this up. Looks a lot like the Becca one, doesn't it? It is a lot peachier, I will just throw that out there right now it is definitely peachier it's also a little bit thicker again we got my i can see them you guys just can't see them let me put it right i got some blueness going on right up here with some veins definitely a lot peachier than the becca one and it's definitely thicker so that is something to keep in mind it's it's just thicker it's 
you want to use a little bit less and blend it out a little bit better if this is one that you're planning to use and you're used to the Becca one this one is definitely thicker but it does a really 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 good job at correcting I actually think that I might prefer this one to the Becca because it's not as shiny um, so like the Becca one can seem like a little bit overwhelming when you put it on there's like a lot of shine to it this one is almost a little bit matte it's still like it's not so matte that it like makes my under eyes look creepy or anything like that it just doesn't have the same crazy reflect that the Becca one has um and it does blend out really easily again it's not so overwhelmingly pigmented that it's hard to cover up with concealer or anything like that if you're used to the Becca one or if you're used to something like this that's thinner you want to make sure that you're applying the appropriate amount because it, you can get a little bit heavy-handed with this one and how thick it is but it is really really nice and i think that out of all of the ones that i've tried so far this one is my favorite all right guys so that is going to wrap up today's video and my discussion of all of these primers that all have the exact same descriptive words for them um i promise in the future for my speed reviews i'm gonna switch it up and have you know a little bit more variety to my products so I'm not talking about the same primers that all have the same finish to them um, I will I'll mix it up I just again I was on a hunt and now I have all of these primers that I'm gonna use and I do again with the exception of the tone adjusting primer I do really really like all of these the prime bright one is the only other one that's just like a little bit meh but it's not bad by any means it's just not one that I'm like oh my god I can't wait to use this tomorrow morning kind of thing um, but overall successful little shopping trips that I've had um, haven't had anything nothing of this is something that I'm like oh my god like I am right, gonna get rid of this um, overall pretty pleased with all the products that I have tried if you have any questions about any of the products that I've talked about in today's video leave them in the comment box I will do my very best to answer them because I probably got distracted by saying the same thing over and over about them that I maybe skipped over some detail about them or something like that but other than that I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video I hope that you guys learned something I hope that you found out about a product that maybe you were curious about comment down below and let me know if you have tried any of the products that I talked about in today's video I would love to know please subscribe if you have not already it would mean the world to me like this video ring the bell do all the things I hope that you guys have an awesome awesome day and I'll see you guys in my next one bye la, la.